Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a visual artist working for an arts organisation called Emerald Ant. You might know our dinosaurs, Horace the Pliosaur and Iggy from the Iguanodon restaurant theatre show. Today I've come up to my workshop to consider a very interesting challenge. How to build a magical cabinet of curiosities. Are you a collector? Do you scout the beaches and hedgerows with a sharp eye for shape, texture and colour? Can you detect the curved lines of an ammonite nestling amongst rocks? Or see the vague skull of an ichthyosaur as it lies buried in a cliff? Or maybe you delight in the patterned symmetry of a butterfly or the cool iridescence of a dragonfly? Whatever your passion, the Cabinet of Curiosities is a house for your treasures, a miniature museum where you alone are the curator. You decide what goes in and how you build your collection. You decide on the lighting, displays and descriptions, the mysterious corners and doors to hidden surprises. Invite your family and friends to enter the museum on special tours where they can share in the joy of your treasures, learn new facts and go away inspired. Let's start building this miniature Let's start museum, building this, this wonder karma, this, this, this cabinet of curiosities. Phew, that's the spooky bit out the way. Now let's get to business. This project is made up of three parts. Part one, transforming a box into an exciting cabinet. Part two, papering, painting and decorating your cabinet. And part three, creating the interior and displaying your collection. We're really making a miniature museum. So first of all, we need to plan our build. Look at some architecture from around the world. I particularly like these buildings from India, Ukraine and Russia. But you might prefer something more modern, like the Guggenheim Museum in Spain. Make a sketch of what you'd like your cabinet to look like. At the same time, have a think about your building materials. You've got your box, so that's the main building sorted. But what about windows and doors, towers and turrets and domes, alcoves and balconies? The best things to use are bits of rubbish that we would ordinarily throw away. So long as you can make a hole in it and fix it, you can use it. Gather together a week's food packaging, some different cardboards and you'll have enough stuff to build your cabinet. Remember to make sure all your things are clean and remove any sticky labels. I have a particular passion for plastic bottles. They come in all shapes and sizes, and because they're transparent, they can be lit from within, like lanterns. Here I've used them as turrets in this miniature theatre. These are the tools and equipment you'll need. Right, let's start. The box is all important. Have a good look at it, turn it on its side and upside down and make a decision on where the front wall will go and how the doors will open and close and what sort of shape you want it to be. Next, strengthen it where there are weak points with tape, especially at the corners and where the box bends. We're going to focus on making the front of your cabinet really interesting. This is the entrance to your museum and it needs to be exciting and welcoming for your guests. Maybe it will contain images of the things inside. For example, if you're displaying flowers, make some flower shapes for the entrance. Using a ruler, mark out some measurements on the front as when you come to build it, this will help keep the front symmetrical. Three, start adding shapes. I've started with a middle dome shape. A really good way of keeping your shape symmetrical is to get a piece of A4 paper, fold it in half, 
draw half your shape on one side and cut it out. Then use that as a template for your card. You can make as many shapes as you like this way and staple them onto the front walls of your cabinet. See how I'm using the marked points to put the pieces on. Now cut out the doors and windows. You might need to ask an adult to do this for you. Strengthen the door hinges with some tape so they don't become too weak. And this is how it looks now. Now make holes and add some string. With string you can lower the front and open the doors in an elegant way. This will really impress your audience later. Now cut out the top of your cabinet. This area will form the roof and it's good to make it as interesting as the part below. I've made the flaps from the box into folding out doors. They're also shaped and these ones have circles in them for paintings or exhibits. Finally, cut some windows out from the back wall. This will allow light in. And... And that's how to build your cabinet. Next time we'll be papering, painting and decorating. So you'll need the following pieces of equipment. Hope you enjoyed this activity. Goodbye.